You're Can you here. all see and hear me? Well, um, I just want to say that I feel very honored and excited to be able to talk with you all today. But let me just start by saying that, man, I miss face-to-face -face meetings. Um, while uh, this, this event thus far has been exhilarating, electric, um, all the adjectives that I could use to describe uh, a virtual meeting, um, I do miss being able to spend some time with you all, give each of you a hug um, and just catch up with you. Um, but I'm excited to maybe share a couple of uh, reflections. Let me see if I can get my screen started here. Um, can you all see this okay? Yes. Great. And I'm, ass I'm assuming that you all can see my screen. Great. Yes. Okay. Well, um, I'd like to, as I've done a few times in the past, review um, where the OpenMRS community is from my vantage point as of today, December the 2nd. Yes, December the 2nd, uh, 2021. And I want to start by talking a little bit about what I think of as an, a very exciting phase that our community is entering into and a little bit of my thinking around why that is. And then I'd like to maybe spend some time talking about where we stand, um, both from the perspective of implementations, from the perspective of the technology, from the perspective of the community, and um, last but not least, from the perspective of how we communicate outside our, our marketing, so to speak, even though we don't really do marketing. And then I just like to maybe share some parting thoughts and uh, perspectives. Um, I've chosen this image um, because when I think about this word, it's the first image that comes to mind uh, for me. And I've been talking to some of you in the community. I've been, I've been using this word a fair bit. I've been saying that OpenMRS is in the middle of uh, a renaissance. For those of you um, who don't know a whole lot about the word, the word renaissance is um, actually a, a French word. And um, in short, the word renaissance uh, means rebirth. And if, if I could look at the OpenMRS community over the last couple of years, it's been undergoing what I believe is the early stages of a very significant, exciting, uh, exhilarating renaissance. But I've been thinking a lot about the fact that that's happening. Um, I hope that you all are feeling it as well. Um, and I've been asking myself, well, why is that happening? Like, what, what is it about now, as opposed to the past 17 to 18 years, that has gotten us to this place where we're witnessing a renaissance? Let me share just a couple of reflections with you. Maybe it might resonate with you all. One of the things that I think about with the OpenMRS community is that we are one persistent, stubborn group. We have been working for a very long time, deliberately, without pause, around this mission that we have of creating a world-class process for um, environments all throughout the world to have better record-keeping practices. And we have not stopped. And in many ways, that persistence has created a, a, an understanding within the international community that we're not going anywhere. And more importantly, the work that we are doing together as a community is inherently sustainable, which creates trust. It creates comfort. It creates familiarity. And um, it has given the world an opportunity to understand that the methodologies that we um, believe so deeply in are important and they have a good understanding of like why it is that we do what we do. I don't know if any of you have ever uh, seen this before or know anything about this, but this uh, little creature is called 
a tardigrade. And I put the tardigrade on there because if you do any research about this, this animal, it is um, probably one of the toughest little critters the world has ever known. You could submit this creature to 150 degrees uh, Celsius temperature. You can freeze it. You can take it to space. You can remove water for years at a time, but these creatures do not stop. And I think about the open MRS community and there's something inside innately within this community that will simply not stop. And that people are noticing that. People understand that and recognize that. Many of you all I, I saw in the audience have been with us for a very long time. And I think your commitment to what it is we're trying to do comes from a genuine place where you understand the importance of this work and the inherent opportunities that this work presents to the world. This is one of my very favorite pictures of the open MRS community, but I put it here because I also think that one of the other attributes that's really important within our community that's created this renaissance is that we have become a, a growing, increasingly diverse group. I have um, been blown away this week by just the broad assortment of new people and organizations uh, that have uh, come to this community. They come from everywhere, from large corporations to individuals who are just wanting to be philanthropic with their time. And that group is becoming increasingly diverse. And when I look at this picture, you might see a bunch of open MRS people, but what I see is a bunch of individuals that each have superpowers. And I think one of the challenges that we have as a community is that, I don't know why my slide is advancing, sorry about that. It, um, but I think that um, each of us has special powers and we have been spending time as a community getting to know each other and understanding each other's superpowers and using them for good. And I'm simply honored and humbled uh, to be alongside you all, but I think the broader world understands everyone's superpowers here. We are a mighty group and a, and a growingly a, a strong influential group as well. You know, one of the people that I think of as having superpowers is Joseph Kowais. And um, we unfortunately um, had to wave goodbye to Joseph this year from a, a freak accident. But the reason that I put Joseph here is both in honor and memory of him, but also in admiration of you all. Because even in the midst of this very tragic circumstance, we all found real time to remember what's actually most important about a community. And that is the care, respect, admiration, and appreciation of each other. And it's in moments like this that I think everyone in the community begins to understand that what we're doing is much more than just a simple piece of software. It's building relationships, being committed to one another, um, and being committed to a higher a higher uh, calling. When I think about the people within this community, I think of while there are lots of smart, innovative thinkers, most members of our community are hands, hands dirty, hardworking, um, project oriented people that are just trying to get work done. We are learning by doing all of the time. And we have learned so much. And what's challenging about implementing record systems, especially at scale, is that many of the most important aspects of being able to do that correctly can't really be understood up front. You almost have to experience them to do them or to really understand them. And by God, we've been learning these things over a very long time. And so our community has really started to build a wisdom that is informed by experience. 
And we're learning a lot of really important lessons. And some of us are learning those lessons incrementally. I, I, I had to, I felt the need to restate this African proverb, given that a large part of our community is based in Africa, but we're learning the, these important things. If you want to go fast, go alone, but if you want to go far, go together. And that really relates to the idea of implementing record systems. There are many uh, clinical settings that try to adopt OpenMRS by taking the piece of software that we make available, going and downloading it, working independently. But those that are really building scale are realizing that the way in which we really need to work together is that we need to collaborate at all places along the continuum of the implementation. And we're seeing, because of that, a much more fundamental, deep engagement with the community that, that we haven't seen historically, um, which is exciting. And it's also challenging in some ways because we're having to figure out ways to empower this growing collection of people in a collective activity. So I think in many ways, these are some of the many reasons why we're feeling something very different this year. And I, I can't tell you the number of people that have come to me over the past couple of days and have said, my God, Paul, the, it's just such an exciting time for OpenMRS. And I couldn't agree more. I feel the same thing. Um, but you know, the reason that we're in this space is because of you all. You all have made these massive contributions over a long period of time to something that most people didn't think was possible back in 2004. But here we are today. And so where are we at right now? Um, well, I think all of the, the things that we've done have contributed to this explosion, this innovative explosion within the OpenMRS community. And hopefully you all are seeing some real things are starting to emerge that are exciting and quite transformative. Let's, let's talk about OpenMRS from a couple of different dimensions. The first is probably one of the most important things, which is the, the world of implementations, like how are implementations doing within OpenMRS? Hopefully you all uh, keep track of the, um, the annual report. And as you can see, um, we keep track. We ask um, implementers to share information about not only the number of implementation sites they um, have implemented and the total number of patients that are included within those. We don't necessarily have very precise data, but these are all self-reported. And so we believe these numbers are under-reported because we don't necessarily hear from everyone. But what you see is a very exciting upward trajectory, which has persisted now for quite some time. It's very exciting time. I want to just make a quick plug for next year's annual report, which will probably start in a couple of months. If you don't share your information about implementations, then we don't necessarily as a community understand what our own growth is and how we need to uh, uh, build out our community infrastructure in response to that so that when members of our community team reach out to you or reach out publicly to ask for your input, please take a few minutes and respond. It really helps us all understand precisely what's going on within the community. You're probably wondering why I'm showing a picture of tacos. <laughs> well, my son will if you if you were to you know make you if you had one thing that you could offer him that you knew by default he would eat literally every day it would be mexican style tacos i order my son a lot of tacos but the one of the reasons why i do so is that i know that he's always going to enjoy them no matter when i order them for i could i could get them four times a week and he would love them and, you know, in some ways, I think the world is starting to think of open MRS in the same way. It's becoming this de facto go-to thing that people rely upon. It's incredible to me um, the number of settings that 
are thinking about moving their efforts over to the OpenMRS community. I don't think that we're really fully comprehending what's about to come in terms of implementation growth within our community. It's pretty breathtaking, but I hope everyone's starting to get prepared for that. So I think from my perspective, this is what I see for that chart going forward. I, I don't think it's going to be linear. I think it's going to start moving into an exponential phase, but I, you know, who knows, maybe I'm just Pollyanna. Um, but I think we're, we're really set up for a, a really wonderful future in terms of implementation growth. Let's talk a little bit about technology. It's hard to imagine this, but our code base has 17 years of contributions. That the, Those contributions just in the first core package are over 12,000 or around 12,000 commits alone. We have stable, tons of real ex implementation experience within the code base, but you know, it's aging in some places. I think we have to be constantly diligent. I think in, in some ways, the, 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 the fact that we have this code base that's really solid um, puts people's mind at ease, but we also have to work really hard to modernize all aspects of it. You all know that we've um, been focusing really hard on the OpenMRS3 framework and the reference application. That, that reference application and framework have brought in a number of conventions that I think are going to be revolutionary for the OpenMRS community, including this micro front end architecture and all of the style conventions that come within the carbon, uh, the carbon framework, along with some of the layout conventions that our design team within the community has put a, a massive amount of effort into standardizing. I think, you know, ultimately um, where our future lies is in our ability to harvest um, products from on top of this 3.0 framework and reference application. And we're already starting to see that happen. It's a very exciting time when it comes to our technology base. And I would suspect that um, because we don't stop and we're like that little uh, tardigrade, our focus will probably go back to the platform here before long. And we're already starting to see evidence of that with our growing uh, strong commitment to fire as an API intermediary. I think that's going to have more profound effects on our, our core here over time. But I suspect that Burke and others will want to say more about this maybe after the presentation or, or maybe throughout the rest of the conference. I wanted to put a plug in for this image because I think it's such a beautiful image that um, our new community director of product grace has created. And it's something that I think there's so much deceptive importance in what looks like a simple image. This is where we as a community from a technology perspective are headed. You know, the thing that we spent so much time on over that first uh, era of OpenMRS is now just a little small part uh, representatively within this image, that platform at the base. On top of that, we're building, you know, a fire API We've built a whole a plug and play front end micro architecture um, based on micro front ends. We have a new UX framework. We have new configuration tools. We've built a lot of tools to, um, to manage deployment around that. And then on top of it, we're actually getting to this thing that by God Darius was talking about years ago. The common, the common concern for years and years was, wow, it's awful great to have a platform that allows people to configure the medical record system um, that they might want. Um, but man, it would be great to have something out of the box that meets 80% of what a typical clinical setting needs. And the 3.0 reference application is becoming exactly that. But the magic of the 3.0 reference application is that it's inherently extendable in a way that is easier for implementers to modify. 
And I think we're going to see a massive explosion in packages and modules that are able to extend that and all kinds of mashups of that reference application and packages into distributions. But there's, you're going to be hearing a lot more about that in the future and maybe even today and later in some of the presentations that we're going to hear. I want to just maybe say a little bit about our development approach. You know, in the early days, we had, you know, a few organizations. We had uh, the Regan Street Institute, AMPATH, Partners in Health, um, uh, the Millennium, uh, I'm sorry, the MRC in South Africa. We didn't have anything other than each other. <laughs> if we wanted to have an implementation in our setting, we had to rely upon each other. That's all was there. There was no open MRS community. It was us that were the community. So we pooled our efforts, and that's what made open MRS happen. Um, you know, volunteers brought additional developer support over time. And I would say that as we grew and the concept of a community formed, um, I think we kind of lost touch of what those roots actually were. But I'm really excited to say that I don't, I feel like we've, we've gotten back in touch with that because today we have these squads. They're supported by a core team of um, people like uh, Grace and Jennifer and others. Um, but we also now are seeing really strong participation, uh, growing participation from representatives from implementations alongside um, some uh, developers that are more, much more community centric and maybe less implementation uh, focused. So it's a, it's a really nice milieu. And I think we need to continue to put more energy into this. Um, if, you're, if you're putting work into a large scale implementation, I think you're beginning to realize that you are putting the implementation in risk unless you are uh, contributing and engaging in this core development process. You have to look after your implementation by contributing to the something that belongs to all of us. It's a, it's a reciprocal relationship. And that means something. There's a lot of intellectual property that has been created, but it doesn't just keep itself fresh by, by leveraging it. You have to give back to it and everyone has to give back to it. But I'm really excited to see that we've made significant progress in that regard. Let's talk a little bit about the community. I, I, I love this image. I think about this image a lot, but like what we do in this community is that we all are faced with really significant challenges around uh, working within these environments, but we all have for years learned to walk together in friendship and in collaboration. And if if you don't feel that um, being at this virtual meeting, that I'm not quite sure what else to say to you. It's, it's staring us right in the face. We have a really broad community participation that started off as implementers and technologists. But as you saw, even during this week, we're seeing engagement by ministries of health. We're seeing engagement by philanthropies like the CDC and USAID and Digital Square. And we're also starting to see engagement from end users as well. We're working really hard to build something that maybe most open source projects don't have, which is a, a, a collection of places for people that aren't writing code or implementing the code to uh, come together to participate and more importantly, guide what we do as the OpenMRS community because they're the beneficiaries of this work. We're, we're really trying hard to think creatively about how to move the locus of the community's authority to the users and the consumers of OpenMRS, which maybe doesn't necessarily fit the typical model of how an open source project works, but I don't know if we've ever done anything like other projects. I don't think that we can uh, rest upon the examples of other projects. I think we have to do what's in the best interest of our beneficiaries in the environments that we're trying to serve. And so thank you in advance for being patient with us as we experiment with these various approaches to engage a collection of people uh, that we 
haven't necessarily completely figured out the right way to, to engage yet. But as you can see from this week and over the past couple of years, it's not as if they don't want to engage. It's just that we haven't figured out the right way to do it. In the dream world, we have a place in where Ministry of Health leadership, end users, implementers, developers, subject matter experts, business entities can all collectively come together in mutual support of the mission in a community construct that feels welcome and cozy for all of them. It's a little bit difficult for a ministry of health leader to come in and listen to a technical conversation about the carbon framework. That's not their interest. But there's a whole bunch of things that they might want to hear about and more directly participate in within the open MRS community that relates to topics of interest to them. So that, that's what I think that's what I'm saying when I think that we have some work to do in that regard. And I think that's where a lot of our energy is going to be placed going forward. I want to um, maybe publicly state and maybe apologize on behalf of the open MRS community that I think that we could do a much better job of calling out the incredible contributions from organizations worldwide. I, you know, I've been in a couple of these unconference sessions and I'm just stunned by the, the broad collection of organizations that are really putting real energy and um, enthusiasm and their time and their knowledge into the open MRS community. We're really grinding out some very important stuff, but I think we, we, we spend a lot of time recognizing organizations that maybe help to start open MRS, organizations like Regan Street, my organization and Partners in Health, and they deserve that uh, recognition, but there are also lots of other organizations that deserve recognition as well. This is our community. It's not the founders community. And we have to put real energy into making you all feel like equal stakeholders in this process. And so um, as, as you might have seen, our community manager, Jennifer Antilla has been putting effort into starting to reach out to you all but I think in 2022, we're going to be putting double down effort into formalizing and documenting these partnerships so that organizations get recognized for the work that they're doing. And more importantly, during that formalization process, we might start to learn about ways in which your organization might engage, but you just don't know how to yet. And so I think that there's a lot of value in making time to talk with your organizations and you as individual leaders of those organizations. And so I hope that when we reach out to you, you make time for that um, over the course of the next six to 12 months. We would very much appreciate that. As you all know, we're putting a lot of energy into upgrading our, our branding and our web presence. You've seen uh, the launching of our website. Um, you've seen our increased efforts to document and publish the open MRS impact in the field. Many of our community members are writing about a lot of good things in the literature and the gray literature about open MRS. If you do a simple Google search or search Twitter, you'll see all kinds of uh, things that are put out there. And that, I don't think that we need to advertise. I think we just need to like keep doing what we're doing and focus on our end users and take a, a moment every once in a while to let the world know about what we've done in support of our users. That is better than any kind of advertisement, in my opinion. I think that, um, as I mentioned before, um, our efforts around uh, direct outreach and um, uh, networking are going to um, extend out to our Ministry of Health, eHealth leaders and those within the ministry. I'm hearing from them a huge interest in um, their ability to be able to peer network with each other um, so that they can understand how they can better oversee and take better ownership of these national scale implementations that are occurring all throughout the countries that we try to serve. And so um, thanks to some, some support from the CDC, um, there might be some opportunities for us over the course of this next calendar year to create some of those structures within the open MRS community. So I'm very excited about that. I just wanna come back and maybe close by saying that I think um, 
it's an exciting time for the open MRS community. I mean, I'm always enthusiastic to give the State of the Union address, but I'm particularly excited this year because I feel like um, maybe five to 10 years from now, I'm gonna look back at this time in a very fond way. Right now, it feels a little bit daunting to be quite frank with you because there's just so much going on right now. And um, I think those are good problems to have. And I, I, I hope that you all are hanging in there and you're, um, providing yourself um, an opportunity for self-care in the midst of all of this. Life is a marathon, not a sprint. M my advice to you all is to um, take, take a time to, every once in a while to look back from the implementation or the direct work that you're responsible for and take a, take a, a second to make a 5,000 foot view of the work that you're doing in the context of this community and take a moment to appreciate that, that what you're doing for your individual setting, because you're doing it within the context of this community is affecting people all around you, whether you realize it or not. The other thing that I would say to you is, um, once you do that and you really feel that in your heart, take a minute to communicate within this community and bring those activities experiences and learnings and uh, struggles and opportunities to the community. Um, talk, talk with each other, share with each other. It might feel like it is a, a time investment, but I can, I can assure you after being a part of this community since its inception, that those investments of time will reap you immense benefit downstream. I couldn't be more excited uh, to be working alongside with you in this open MRS community, and I couldn't be more proud of what we've all built together. Um, it's an honor and a privilege to be able to give a State of the Union address to this community. I almost feel like I don't deserve it um, at this point because you all are doing way more than I could ever put into this effort. It's gone it's so much beyond um, some of the founders humble ambitions way back when. But I do appreciate the opportunity to be able to share my reflections with you. And if anyone has any thoughts or questions, um, I'm happy to take them. But that's all I have today. Thank you very much.